Lycia Lycian, TRM, Ms. Greek, Lycia Lycia, Turkish, Lycia was a geopolitical region in Anatolia in what are now the provinces of Antalya and Mugla on the southern coast of Turkey, and Berder Province inland. Known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age, it was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language a later form of Luwian after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Achaemenid Empire in the Iron Age. At that time 546 BC, the Luwian speakers were decimated, and Lycia received an influx of Persian speakers. Ancient sources seem to indicate that an older name of the region was Alope ancient Greek, Alope translate. Alope, Lycia fought for the Persians in the Persian Wars, but on the defeat of the Achaemenid Empire by the Greeks, it became intermittently a free agent. After a brief membership in the Athenian Empire, it seceded and became independent its treaty with Athens had omitted the usual non-secession clause, was under the Persians again, revolted again, was conquered by Mausolus of Caria, returned to the Persians, and finally fell under Macedonian hegemony upon the defeat of the Persians by Alexander the Great. Due to the influx of Greek speakers and the sparsity of the remaining Lycian speakers, Lycia was rapidly Hellenized under the Macedonians, and the Lycian language disappeared from inscriptions and coinage. On defeating Antiochus III in 188 BC the Romans gave Lycia to Rhodes for 20 years, taking it back in 168 BC. In these latter stages of the Roman Republic Lycia came to enjoy freedom as a Roman protectorate. The Romans validated home rule officially under the Lycian League in 168 BC. This native government was an early federation with republican principles, these later came to the attention of the framers of the United States Constitution, influencing their thoughts. Despite home rule, Lycia was not a sovereign state and had not been since its defeat by the Carians. In 43 AD, the Roman Emperor Claudius dissolved the League, and Lycia was incorporated into the Roman Empire with provincial status. It became an eparchy of the Eastern, or Byzantine Empire, continuing to speak Greek even after being joined by communities of Turkish language speakers in the early 2nd millennium. After the fall of the Byzantine Empire in the 15th century, Lycia was under the Ottoman Empire, and was inherited by the Turkish Republic on the fall of that empire. The Greek and Turkish population was exchanged when the border between Greece and Turkey was negotiated in 1923. Topic. Geography The borders of Lycia varied over time, but at its center was the Teke Peninsula of southwestern Turkey, which juts southward into the Mediterranean Sea, bounded on the west by the Gulf of Fethai, and on the east by the Gulf of Antalya. Lycia comprised what is now the westernmost portion of Antalya province, the easternmost portion of Mughla province, and the southernmost portion of Berder province. In ancient times the surrounding districts were, from west to east, Caria, Pisidia, and Pamphylia, all equally as ancient, and each speaking its own Anatolian language. The name of the Teke Peninsula comes from the former name of Antalya province, which was Teke province, named from the Turkish tribe that settled in the region. <laughs> Physical geography Four ridges extend from northeast to southwest, roughly, forming the western extremity of the Taurus Mountains. Furthest west of the four are Bonchik Daglary, or the Bonchik Mountains, extending from about Altanyela, Berder, southwest to about Oran north of Fethai. This is a fairly low range peaking at about 2,340 meters 7, feet. To the west of it the steep gorges of Dalaman Kai, the Dalaman River. The ancient Indus, formed the traditional border between Caria and Lycia. The stream, 229 kilometers 142 miles long, enters the Mediterranean to the west of modern-day Dalaman. Upstream it is dammed in four places, after an origin in the vicinity of Sarikovac in Denizli province. The next ridge to the east is Akdaglari, the White Mountains, about 150 kilometers 93 miles long, with a high point at Uluktip, Ilik Peak of 3,024 meters 9,921 feet. This massif may have been ancient Mount Cragus. Along its western side flows Asin Kai, the Asin River, anciently the Xanthus, Lycian Arna, originating in the Bonchik Mountains, flowing south, and transecting the several-mile-long beach at Patara. 
The Xanthus Valley was the country called Tremise in dynastic Lycia, from which the people were the Termili or Tremili, or Kragos in the coin inscriptions of Greek Lycia, Kr or Ksankr. The name of Western Lycia was given by Charles Fellows to it and points of Lycia west of it. The next ridge to the east, Badaglari, the Bay Mountains, peaks at Kislarsivri C, 3,086 metres, 10,125 feet, the highest point of the Teke Peninsula. It is most likely the ancient Masochitis range. Between Badaglari and Akdaglari is an upland plateau, Elmali, where ancient Milius was located. The elevation of the town of Elmali, which means Apple Town, from the density of fruit-bearing groves in the region, is 1,100 meters (3,600 feet), which is the highest part of the valley below it. Fellows considered the valley to be central Lycia. The Akshai, or White River, the ancient Edessa, brought water from the slopes to the plain, where it pooled in two lakes below the town, Karagal and Avlangal. Currently the two lakes are dry, the waters being captured on an ongoing basis by irrigation systems for the trees. The Edessa once drained the plain through a chasm to the east, but now flows entirely through pipelines covering the same route, but emptying into the water supplies of Arikanda and Arif. An effort has been made to restore some of the cedar forests cleared in antiquity. The easternmost ridge extends along the east coast of the Teke Peninsula, and is called, generally, Tatali Daglari, the Tatali Mountains. The high point within them is Tatali Dag, elevation 2,366 meters (7,762 feet), dubbed Mount Olympus in antiquity by the Greeks, remembering Mount Olympus in Greece. These mountains create a rugged coastline called by fellows Eastern Lycia. Much of it has been reserved as Olympos Badaglari Parki. Within the park on the slopes of Mount Olympus is a U-shaped outcrop, Yanardas, above Sorali, from which methane gas, naturally perpetually escaping from below through the rocks, feeds eternal flames. This is the location of ancient Mount Chimera. Through the cul-de-sac between Badaglari and Tataladaglari, the Alakir K. Alakir River. The ancient Limera, flows to the south trickling from the broad valley under Superhighway D400 near downtown Kumluka across a barrier beach into the Mediterranean. This configuration is entirely modern. Upstream the river is impounded behind Alakir Dam to form an urban size reservoir. Below the reservoir a braided stream alternates with a single, small channel flowing through irrigated land. The wide bed gives an indication of the former size of the river. Upstream from the reservoir the stream lies in an unaltered gorge, flowing from the slopes of Badaglari. The ancient route to Antalya goes up the valley and over the cul-de-sac, as the coast itself is impassable except by boat. The valley was the seat of ancient Solimus, home of the Solimi. <laughs> Demography The ancient sources mention about 70 settlements of Lycia. These are situated either along the coastal strip in the protecting coves or on the slopes and hills of the mountain ranges. They are often difficult to access, which in ancient times was a defensive feature. The rugged coastline favored well-defended ports from which, in troubled times, Lycian pirate fleets sallied forth. The principal cities of ancient Lycia were Xanthus, Patara, Myra, Panara, Tlos and Olympos each entitled to three votes in the Lycian League and Phasalus. Cities such as Telmesos and Crya were sometimes listed by classical authors as Carion and sometimes as Lycian. Topic. Features and sites of interest Although the 2nd century BC dialogue Arats found the cities of Lycia "...interesting more for their history than for their monuments, since they have retained none of their former splendor." Many relics of the Lycians remain visible today. These relics include the distinctive rock-cut tombs in the sides of cliffs. The British Museum in London grabbed one of the best collections of Lycian artifacts. Latoon, an important center in Hellenic times of worship for the goddess Leto and her twin children, Apollo and Artemis, and nearby Xanthus, ancient capital of Lycia, constitute a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Turkey's first waymarked long distance footpath, the Lycian Way, follows part of the coast of the region. The establishment of the path was a private initiative by a British, Turkish woman called Kate Klo. It is intended to support sustainable tourism in smaller mountain villages which are in the process of depopulation. Since it is mainly walked in March to June and Sept to November, it also has lengthened the tourism season. 
The Turkish Culture and Tourism Ministry promotes the Lycian coast as part of the Turkish Riviera or the Turquoise Coast, but the most important part of this is further west near Bodrum. This coast features rocky or sandy beaches at the bases of cliffs and settlements in protected coves that cater to the yachting industry. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ancient language. The eponymous inhabitants of Lycia, the Lycians, spoke Lycian, a member of the Luwian branch of the Anatolian languages, a subfamily of the Indo-European family. Lycian has been attested only between about 500 BC and no later than 300 BC, in a unique alphabet devised for the purpose from the Greek alphabet of Rhodes. However, the Luwian languages originated in Anatolia during the second millennium BC. The country was known by the name of Luka then, and was under Hittite rule. The gap must be a gap in the use of writing. At about 535 BC, before the first appearance of attested Lycian, the Achaemenid Empire overran Lycia. Despite its resistance, because of which the population of Xanthus was decimated, Lycia became part of the Persian Empire. The first coins with Lycian letters on them appeared not long before 500. Lycia prospered under a monarchy set up by the Persians. Subsequently, the Lycians were verbose in stone, carving memorial, historical and governmental inscriptions. Not all of these can yet be entirely understood, due to remaining ignorance of the language. The term, dynastic period, is used. If the government was any sort of federal democracy, there is no evidence of it, as the term, dynastic, suggests. Lycia already had been hosting a small enclave of the Dorian Greeks as Doris for some centuries. Rhodes also was Dorian. After the defeat of the Persians by the Greeks, Lycia became open to further Greek settlement. Inscriptions in Lycian diminished, while those in Greek multiplied. Complete assimilation to Greek occurred in the 4th century, after Lycia had come under Alexander the Great and his fellow Macedonians. There is no agreement yet on which Lycian inscription is the very last. No date is later than 300 at the very latest. Subsequently, the Lycians were defeated by the Roman Republic, which for most of its final tenure allowed home rule to the Lycians, including their own language, then Greek. Lycia continued under the single empire, and fell naturally into the Eastern Empire when the division occurred. It was still speaking the Greek of the times when the Eastern Empire became the Byzantine Empire. In the second millennium Anatolia was infiltrated by Turkish-speaking settlers, but they never were very numerous in Lycia. After the fall of the Byzantines in the 15th century, Lycia was under the Ottoman Empire. Turkish and Greek settlements existed side by side, each speaking their own language. All Greek-speaking enclaves in Anatolia were exchanged for Turkish speakers in Greece during the final settlement of the border with Greece at the beginning of the Turkish Republic in 1923. The Turks had won wars with Greece and Armenia in the preceding few years, settling the issue of whether the coast of Anatolia was going to be Greek or Turkish. The intent of the Treaty of Lausanne 1923 was to define borders that would not leave substantial populations of one country in another. Some population transfers were enforced. Former Greek villages still stand as ghost towns in Lycia. History Topic. Proto history Lycia had a proto history little suspected by the historians of the 19th century before the decipherment of Hittite and ancient Egyptian, and the discovery of government records pertaining to Lycia and the Lycians. The records, for the most part, do not offer positive reports of them. In reports of official transactions with Lycians in the Late Bronze Age, the Hittite and Egyptian empires described them as rebels, pirates, and raiders. The Lycians have left no written records of themselves at all from this period, which suggests that they probably were illiterate. Ancient Egyptian records describe the Lycians as allies of the Hittites. Lycia may have been a member state of the Asua League of c. 1250 BC, appearing as Luca or Luca. After the collapse of the Hittite Empire, Lycia emerged as an independent, Neo-Hittite, kingdom. The latter term was assigned to remnant states that continued after the fall of the Hittite Empire. It is entirely conventional, these states were not Hittite in any way. For the most part they spoke languages of the Luwian family. <inaudible> Age of legend According to Herodotus, Europa had at least two sons, Sarpedon and Minos. 
When they contended for the kingship of Crete, their native land, Minos drove Sarpedon and his people, the Termili, into exile. They landed in Milius, bearing the ancient name of the country known later as Lycia, which was tenanted by the Solimi. Subsequently, Lycus, the son of Pandion II of Athens, driven into exile by his brother, King Aegis, settled among the Termili. They named it Lycia after him. Herodotus ends his tale with the observation that the Lycians were matrilineal. Lycia appears elsewhere in Greek myth, such as in the story of Bellerophon, who eventually succeeded to the throne of the Lycian king Iobates or Amphianax. Lycia was frequently mentioned by Homer as an ally of Troy. In Homer's Iliad, the Lycian contingent was said to have been led by two esteemed warriors, Sarpedon, son of Zeus and Laodamia, and Glaucus, son of Hippolochus. Topic: <laughs> Dynastic period. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Acquisition by Cyrus the Great circa 540 BC. Herodotus writes more credibly of contemporaneous events, especially where they concerned his native land. Asia Minor had been partly conquered by the Iranians, starting with the Scythians, then the Medes. The latter were defeated by the Persians, who incorporated them and their lands into the new Persian Empire. Cyrus the Great, founder of the Achaemenid dynasty, resolved to complete the conquest of Anatolia as a prelude to operations further west, to be carried out by his successors. He assigned the task to Harpagus, a Median general, who proceeded to subdue the various states of Anatolia, one by one, some by convincing them to submit, others through military action. Arriving at the southern coast of Anatolia in 546 BC, the army of Harpagus encountered no problem with the Carians and their immediate Greek neighbors and alien populations, who submitted peacefully. In the Xanthus Valley an army of Xanthians sallied out to meet them, fighting determinedly, although vastly outnumbered. Driven into the citadel, they collected all their property, dependents and slaves into a central building, and burned them up. Then, after taking an oath not to surrender, they died to a man fighting the Persians, foreshadowing and perhaps setting an example for Spartan conduct at the Battle of Thermopylae a few generations later. Coincidentally archaeology has turned up a major fire on the Acropolis of Xanthus in the mid-6th century BC, but as Antony Keane points out, there is no way to connect that fire with the event presented by Herodotus. It might have been another fire. The Kanyans, says Herodotus, followed a similar example immediately after. If there was an attempt by any of the states of Lycia to join forces, as happened in Greece fifty years later, there is no record of it, suggesting that no central government existed. Each country awaited its own fate alone. Herodotus also says or implies that 80 Xanthian families were away at the time, perhaps with the herd animals in alpine summer pastures pure speculation, but helped repopulate the place. However, he reports, the Xanthians of his time were mainly descended from non-Xanthians. Looking for any nuance that might shed light on the repopulation of Xanthus, Keen interprets Herodotus, those Lycians who now say that they are Xanthians. To mean that Xanthus was repopulated by other Lycians and not by Iranians or other foreigners. Herodotus said nothing of the remainder of Lycia, presumably, that is true because they submitted without further incident. Lycia was well populated and flourished as a Persian satrapy, moreover, they spoke mainly Lycian. The Harpagid theory The Harpagid theory was initiated by Charles Fellows, discoverer of the Xanthian obelisk, and person responsible for the transportation of the Xanthian marbles from Lycia to the British Museum. Fellows could not read the Lycian inscription, except for one line identifying a person of illegible name, to whom the monument was erected, termed the son of Arpaku in Lycian, equivalent to Greek Harpagos. Concluding that this person was the conqueror of Lycia in 546, Fellows conjectured that Harpagos had been made permanent satrap of Lycia for his services, moreover, the position was hereditary, creating a Harpagid dynasty. This theory prevailed nearly without question for several generations. To the inscriptions of the Xanthian obelisk were added those of the Latun trilingual, which gave a sequel, as it were, to the names on the obelisk. Studies of coin legends, initiated by Fellows, went on. Currently most, but not all, of the Harpagid theory, has been rejected. The Achaemenids utilized no permanent satrapies, the political circumstances changed too often. The conqueror of new lands was seldom made their satrap, he went on to other conquests. It was not the Persian custom to grant hereditary satrapies, satrap was only a step in the cursus honorum. 
and finally, a destitute mountain country would have been a poor reward for Cyrus' best general. The main evidence against the Harpagid theory as Keen calls it, is the reconstruction of the name of the Xanthian obelisks deceased as Lycian Cariga, Greek Gergis Nereid Monument, a king reigning approximately 440–410 BC, over a century later than the conqueror of Lycia. The next logical possibility is that Cariga's father, Arpaku, was a descendant of the conqueror. In opposition, Keen reconstructs the dynastic sequence from coin inscriptions as follows. Cariga had two grandfathers, Cuperly and Cariga. The younger Cariga was the successor of Cuperly. The latter's son, therefore, Kiziga, who was Cariga's uncle, must have predeceased Cuperly. Arpaku is listed as regnant on two other inscriptions, but he did not succeed Cuperly. He must therefore have married a daughter of Cuperly, and have also predeceased the long-lived Cuperly. The latter then was too old to reign de facto. On the contemporaneous deaths of both him and his son-in-law, Cariga, named after his paternal grandfather, acquired the throne. Cuperly was the first king recorded for certain there was an earlier possible in the coin legends. He reigned approximately 480-440. Harpagos was not related by blood. The conqueror, therefore, was not the founder of the line, which was not Harpagid. An Iranian family, however, producing some other Harpagids, did live in Lycia and was of sufficient rank to marry the king's daughter. As to whether the Iranian family were related to any satrap, probably not. Herodotus said that Satrapy I the satrapies were numbered consisted of Ionia, Magnesia, Aeolia, Caria, Lycia, Milia, and Pamphylia, who together paid a tax of 400 silver talents. This satrapy was later broken up and recombined. Keen hypothesizes that since Caria had responsibility for the king's highway through Lycia, Lycia and Caria were a satrapy. Topic: The Lycian Monarchy. The Achaemenid Persian policy toward Lycia was hands off. There was not even a satrap stationed in the country. The reason for this tolerance after such a determined initial resistance is that the Iranians were utilizing another method of control, the placement of aristocratic Persian families in a region to exercise putative home rule. There is some evidence that the Lycian population was not as docile as the Persian handoff policy would suggest. A section of the Persepolis Administrative Archives called the Persepolis Fortification Tablets, regarding the redistribution of goods and services in the Persepolis Palace economy, mentions some redistributed prisoners of war, among whom were the Termerla or Termerlia, Lycian Trm. Mili. Lycians. They lived during the reign of Darius I. The tablets dating from 509. For closer attention to their conquered, the Persian government preferred to establish a client state, setting up a monarchy under their control. The term, dynast, has come into use among English-speaking scholars, but that is not a native term. The Lycian inscriptions indicate the monarch was titled Exnawati, more phonetically Kachnawati. The holders of this title can be traced in coin legends, having been given the right to coin. Lycia had a single monarch, who ruled the entire country from a palace at Xanthus. The monarchy was hereditary, hence the term, dynast. It was utilized by Persia as a means of transmitting Persian policy. It must have been they who put down local resistance and transported the prisoners to Persepolis, or ordered them transported. Some members of the dynasty were Iranian, but mainly it was native Lycian. If the survivors of 546 were in fact herdsmen speculation, then all the Xanthian nobility had perished, and the Persians must have designated some other Lycian noble, whom they could trust. The first dynast is believed to be the person mentioned in the last line of the Greek epigram inscribed on the Xanthian obelisk, which says, This monument has brought glory to the family Genos of Ka Ika, which has a letter missing. It is probably not asterisk Caracas, for Carica, as the latter is translated in the Latoon trilingual as Gurgis. A more likely possibility is asterisk Kasikas for Kiziga, the same as Cariga's uncle, the successor to Cuperly, who predeceased him. Herodotus mentioned that the leader of the Lycian fleet under Xerxes in the Second Persian War of 480 BC was Kubraniscos Sika, previously interpreted as Cyberniscus, the son of Sikas. Two non Lycian names. A slight regrouping of the letters obtains Kuberni Kosika, Cyberni, son of Kosikas, where Kosikas is for Kiziga. Cyberni went to the bottom of the Straits of Salamis with the entire Lycian fleet in the Battle of Salamis, but he may be commemorated by the Harpy tomb. 
According to this theory, Cyberny was the cub of the first coin legends, dated to the window, 520 to 500. The date would have been more towards 500. There is a gap, however, between him and Kuperly, who should have had a father named the same as his son, Kiziga. The name Kuberny does not appear again. Keane suggests that Darius I created the kingship on reorganizing the satrapies in 525, and that on the intestate death of Kuberny in battle, the Persians chose another relative named Kiziga, who was the father of Kuperly. The Lycian dynasty may therefore be summarized as follows. Topic. Classical period Topic. Ally of Athens in the Delian League C. To BC. Following the Achaemenid defeat in the Greco-Persian War 479 BC, the Lycians may have temporarily joined the Greek side during the counter-attacks of the Spartan Pausanias in the eastern Mediterranean circa 478 BC. However, the Lycian were still on the Persian side during the expeditions of Cimon circa 470 BC, who finally persuaded the Lycian to join the Athenian alliance, the Delian League. Diodorus relates that Cimon persuaded those of Lycia and took them into his allegiance. As the power of Athens weakened and Athens and Sparta fought the Peloponnesian Wars 431 BC, the majority of Lycian cities defaulted from the Delian League, with the exception of Telmesos and Phasilus. In 429 BC, Athens sent an expedition against Lycia to try to force it to rejoin the League. This failed when Lycia's leader Gergis, Cariga of Xanthus defeated Athenian general Melisander. Topic. Renewed Achaemenid control c. The Lycians once again fell under Persian domination, and by 412 BC, Lycia is documented as fighting on the winning side of Persia. The Persian satraps were reinstalled, but as the coinage of the time attests, they allowed local dynasts the freedom to rule. The last known dynast of Lycia was Pericles. He ruled 380 to 360 BCE over eastern Lycia from Limera, at a time when western Lycia was directly under Persian domination. Pericles took an active part in the revolt of the satraps against Achaemenid power, but lost his territory when defeated. After Pericles, Persian rule was re established firmly in Lycia in 366 or 362 BCE. Control was taken by Mausolus, the satrap of nearby Caria, who moved the satraps' residence to Halicarnassus. Lycia was also ruled by men such as Mithrapata, late 4th century BC, whose name was Persian. Persia held Lycia until it was conquered by Alexander III the Great of Macedon during 334–333 BC. Dynastic portraiture on coinage Although many of the Furt coins in antiquity illustrated the images of various gods, the first portraiture of actual rulers appears with the coinage of Lycia in the late 5th century BC. No ruler had dared illustrating his own portrait on coinage until that time. The Achaemenids had been the first to illustrate the person of their king or a hero in a stereotypical indifferentiated manner, showing a bust or the full body, but never an actual portrait, on their Sigloi and Derek coinage from circa 500 BC. From the time of Alexander the Great, portraiture of the issuing ruler would then become a standard, generalized, feature of coinage. Topic. Hellenistic period 333 BC. After the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC, his generals fought amongst themselves over the succession. Lycia fell into the hands of the general Antigonus by 304 BC. In 301 BC Antigonus was killed by an alliance of the other successors of Alexander, and Lycia became a part of the kingdom of Lysimachus, who ruled until he was killed in battle in 281 BC control then passed to the Ptolemaic kingdom, center on Egypt. Ptolemy II Philadelphos ruled 285-246 BC, who supported the Limerans of Lycia when they were threatened by the Galatians a Celtic tribe that had invaded Asia Minor. The citizens of Limera in return dedicated a monument to Ptolemy, called the Ptolemaean circa 270 BC. 
By 240 BC Lycia was firmly part of the Ptolemaic Kingdom, centered on Egypt, and remained in their control through 200 BC It had apparently come under Seleucid control by 190 BC, when the Seleucids' defeat in the Battle of Magnesia resulted in Lycia being awarded to Rhodes in the Peace of Apamea in 188 BC. It was then granted autonomy as a protectorate of Rome in 168 BC and remained so until becoming a Roman province in 43 AD under Claudius. Lycian League Formation The Lycian League Lycian Sistema in Strabo's Greek transliterated, a standing together is first known from two inscriptions of the early 2nd century BC in which it honors two citizens. Bryce hypothesizes that it was formed as an agent to convince Rome to rescind the annexation of Lycia to Rhodes. It is not known for certain whether it was formed before or after Lycia was removed from Rhodian control. According to Livy, the consul Lucius Cornelius Scipio Asiaticus put Lycia had been under Rhodian control in 190 BC. He wrote that a Lycian embassy complained about the cruel tyranny of the Rhodians and that they were under King Antiochus III the great they had been in liberty in comparison. It was slavery, rather than just political oppression. They, their wives and children were the victims of violence, their oppressors vented their rage on their persons and their backs, their good name was besmirched and dishonored, their condition rendered detestable in order that their tyrants might openly assert a legal right over them and reduce them to the status of slaves bought with money. The Senate gave them a letter to and to the Rhodias that less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it was not the pleasure of the Senate that either the Lycians or any other men born free should be handed over as slaves to the Rhodians or anyone else the Lycians possessed the same rights under the suzerainty and protection of Rhodes that friendly states possessed under the suzerainty of Rome Polybius wrote that the Romans sent envoys to Rhodes to say that the Lycians had not been handed over to Rhodes as a gift, but to be treated like friends and allies. The Rhodians claimed that King Eumenes of Pergamon had stirred up the Lycians against them. In 169 BC, during the Third Macedonian War, the relationship between Rome and Rhodes became strained and the Roman Senate issued a decree which gave the Carians and the Lycians their freedom. Polybius recorded a decree freeing the Carians and Lycians in 168 7 BC. Strabo wrote that there were 23 cities which came together for a general assembly and had a share in its votes. After choosing whatever city they approve of. The last statement is unclear. The largest cities had three votes, the medium sized ones two, and the rest one. He noted that the League did not have freedom over matters of war and peace. Formerly they deliberated about war and peace, and alliances, but this is not now permitted, as these things are under the control of the Romans. It is only done by their consent, or when it may be for their own advantage. Quote, However, they had the freedom to choose a Lysiarch as the head of the League and to designate general courts. He also noted. Since they lived under such a good government, they remained ever free under the Romans, thus retaining their ancestral usages i.e. ancestral laws and customs. Topic. Composition Strabo wrote that according to a source the six largest were Xanthus, Patara, Panara, Olympos, Myra, and Tlos. Tlos was near the pass that leads over into Sibara. The names of the other cities has been identified by a study of the coins and mention in other texts. The coins recognize two districts, termed, for want of a better term, monetary districts, Masochitis and Cragus, both named after mountain ranges, in the shadow of which, presumably, the communities lived and conducted business. Where coinage before the Lycian League had often been stamped Lee for Lycia, it was now stamped KP KR or MA. In 81 BC Lucius Licinius Marina, the Roman commander who fought the Second Mithridatic War 83 BC in Anatolia deposed Mogets, a tyrant of the Tetrapolis four towns in the Sibirites northern Lycia. It had been formed by the city of Sibira Megale, Greater Sibira, as opposed to Sibira Micra, Little Sibira, of the coast, not too far from modern side. It was in the Sibirites region, in today's Turkish Lake region. According to Strabo, Sibira had two votes, while the other three cities had one and the Tertarchy was ruled by a benign tyran. 
When Marina ended the tyranny, he included the cities of Balbora and Bubin within the territory of the Lycians. In 181 BC, at the end of the Roman Seleucid War, the consul Gnaeus Manlius Volso decided to fight the Galatian War 189 BC against the Galatians. He was supported by Attalus II, the king of Pergamon. The two leaders marched inland and reached Fambilia levying soldiers from local rulers. They then got to the territory of Sabria, ruled by another tyrant called Mogets. When Roman envoys went to the city he begged them not to ravage his lands as he was a friend of Rome and promised a paltry sum of money, 15 talents. Mogets sent his envoys to Manlius' camp. Polybius had Manlius say that he was the worst enemy of Rome and that he deserved punishment rather than friendship ancient historians made up speeches. Mogets and his friends went to meet Manlius dressed in humble clothing, bewailing the weakness of his town and begging to accept the fifteen talents Manlius was amazed at his impudence and said that if he did not pay five hundred talents and thank his stars, he would lay his lands to waste and sack the city. Moesites persuaded him to reduce the sum to one hundred talents and promised an amount of grain. Mogets saved his city and Manlius moved on. Polybius described Mogets as cruel and treacherous man and worthy of more than a passing notice." <inaudible> Roman period When Rome got involved in the eastern Mediterranean the Lycians allied with Rome. An inscription found in Tiberissos provides the first record of such an alliance treaty Fotis. The dating is uncertain. It precedes the Treaty of 46 BC see below, and could go back to the 2nd or 1st century BC. The context in which this treaty was made is unknown. It could have been concluded during the expansionist moves by Antiochus III the Great, the Seleucid king, in Anatolia prior to the Roman Seleucid War 192-188 BC, or during or after this war. Alternatively, it could have been concluded in the context of the Mithridatic Wars in Anatolia in the 1st century BC. The preamble stated, there will be peace and loyal alliance between the people of the Romans and the cities of Lycia and the assembly of the Lycians by land and sea for all time. There were four clauses which stipulated that, 1 the Lycian League was not to allow enemies of Rome to cross all territory over which they had authority so that they could bring war on Rome or her subjects and was not to give them aid, 2 Rome was not to allow enemies of the Lycians to pass through territory they controlled or had authority over so that they might bring war on the Lycian League or the people subject to them and was not to give them aid, 3 if anyone started a war against the Lycian people first, Rome was to come to her aid as soon as possible and if anyone started a war War against Rome, the Lycian League was to aid Rome as soon as possible provided that this was allowed to Rome and the Lycian League in accordance with the agreements and oath. Four. Additions and subtractions to the agreements were possible if each side agreed though a joint decision. An inscription found on a statue base found in Thespiae attests that in 46 BC Julius Caesar signed a treaty with the Lycian League. It had nine articles. The first article stipulated friendship, alliance and peace both by land and sea in perpetuity." Let the Lycians observe the power and preeminence of the Romans as is proper in all circumstances. Quote, the other articles stipulated, two, neutrality of each party to the other's enemy, three, mutual help in case of an attack on either party, four, anyone charged with import or export of contraband goods was to be charged by the highest official of the two parties, five, Romans accused of a capital crime in Lycia were to be judged in Rome by her own laws and Lycians accused of these crimes were to be judged in Lycia by her own laws, six, Romans in a dispute with Lycians were to be judged in in Lycia according to her own laws, if Lycians were brought to court by Romans the case was to be heard by whatever official the disputants chose for the case to be dealt with justly. Seven, no person was to be taken as a surety, Roman and Lycian war prisoners were to be returned to their own countries, captured horses, slaves or ships were to be restored. Eight, named cities, ports and territories which were restored to the Lycians were to belong to them. Nine, both parties agreed to abide by the terms of this this oath and the treaty. Details could be amended if both parties agreed. In 43 AD, the emperor Claudius annexed Lycia. Cassius Dio wrote that Claudius reduced the Lycians to servitude because they had revolted and slain some Romans and he incorporated them in the prefecture of Pamphylia. He also provided some details of the investigation of this affair conducted in the Senate. 
Suetonius wrote that Claudius deprived the Lycians of their independence because of deadly intestine feuds. Quote, in an inscription found at Purge which has been dated to late 45, early 46 BC the Lycians, who described themselves as faithful allies, praised Claudius for freeing them from disturbances, lawlessness and brigandage and for the restoration of the ancestral laws. It makes a reference to the transfer of power from the multitude to the councillors, selected from among the best. Therefore, it seems that there might have been a revolutionary popular uprising which could have overturned the established order. The annexation of Lycia seems to fit the common reason for annexing Roman client states or allies in this period, the loss on stability due to internal strife or, in some cases, the weakening or end of a ruling dynasty. The restoration of ancestral law was probably linked to the Roman practice of respecting and guaranteeing the ancestral laws, customs and privileges of city-states or leagues of city-states it made alliance agreements within the eastern Mediterranean. Lycia was annexed, but the Lycian League was retained as so were self-governance regarding most local matters according to local traditional laws and the League's authority over local courts. The treaty concluded by Caesar in 46 BC had already established a framework for the distinction of judicial areas under the competence of the Lycian League and those under the Roman Praetor Peregrino chief justice for foreigners and could be used to define the assignment of legal areas between the Roman provincial governor and the League. The Romans re-established stability in Lycia and retained friendly relations with the Lycians and Lycian rights to their traditional laws, customs and privileges. In 74 AD the Emperor Vespasian joined the Roman provinces of Lycia and Pamphylia into the province of Lycia at Pamphylia. Cassius Dio's statement that Claudius incorporated Lycia into Pamphylia which he had as governed by a prefect, rather than a propraetor, see above is refuted by the existence of Legati Augusti pro praetor Lyciae imperial provincial governors of Lycia with propraetorial rank. The adoptive son and heir of Augustus, Gaius Caesar, died in Lycia in 4 AD after being wounded during a campaign in Artigira, Armenia. Byzantine era. During the Byzantine period Lycia and Pamphylia came under the command of the Karabizhanoi the mainstay of the Byzantine navy from the mid-7th century until the early 8th century. After the Karabizhanoi were disbanded between ca. 719-720 and ca. 727 they became the theme of the Sabarayos. Turkish era Lycia was incorporated into the Ottoman Empire and eventually became part of Turkey. A substantial Christian community of Greeks lived in Lycia until the 1920s when they were forced to migrate to Greece after the population exchange between Greece and Turkey following the Greco-Turkish War in the early 20th century. The abandoned Greek villages in the region are a striking reminder of this exodus. Abandoned Greek houses can still be seen in the towns of Demre, Kalkan and Kas, and Kaya is a Greek ghost town. A small population of Turkish farmers moved into the region when the Lycian Greeks migrated to Greece. The region is now one of the key centers of domestic and foreign tourism in Turkey. See also Ancient regions of Anatolia Lycian script Tomb of Amintas Lycian Way Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Primary sources Poem on the Battle of Kadesh 305-313, Ramesses II Great Karnak Inscription 572-592, Merneptabrested, J. H. 1906 Ancient Records of Egypt. Volume. 3, Chicago, University of Chicago Press, Plague Prayers of Mercilus A1-11, B, Mercilus Preachard, J. B. 1969. Ancient Near Eastern Texts. Princeton, Princeton University Press. Topic secondary Sources Barnett, R. D. 1975. The Sea Peoples. In J. B. Berry, S. A. Cook, F. E. Adcock. The Cambridge Ancient History. 2, Part 2. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. pp. 362-366, refers to many different sea peoples and their contact with Egypt and Anatolia. 
also tells about the Philistines during the reign of Ramesses III. Bryce, T. 1993. Luca Revisited. Journal of Near Eastern Studies. 51 121-130. doi. 101086 373535 discusses Luca's relations to other regions like Miletus and where they inhabited. Bryce, T., Zoll, J. 1986. The Lycians, 1. Copenhagen, Museum Tusculanum Press, covers the Lycians and where they lived, their history, language, culture, cults, and their language. Druze, R. 1995. The End of the Bronze Age, Changes in Warfare and the Catastrophe ca. 1200 BC. Princeton, Princeton University Press, A Description of the Egyptian Evidence on the Sea Peoples. Hill, George Francis 1897. Catalogue of the Greek Coins of Lycia, Pamphylia, and Pisidia. A Catalogue of the Greek Coins in the British Museum. London, Trustees of the British Museum, A Presentation of the History of Lycia During the Time of Its Minting Coins, and the Coins. Keane, Anthony G. 1998-1992. Dynastic Lycia, A Political History of the Lycians and Their Relations with Foreign Powers, c. 545-362 BC. Nemozine, Bibliotheca Classica Batavia. Supplementum. Leiden, Boston, Köln, Brill. Topic external links Saturic, Patti, Saturic, Kamal. Lycian Turkey, LycianTurkey.com. Archived from the original on 4 February 2012. Retrieved 14 February 2012. Walker, Christopher, Anderson, Thorne, Photographer, September to October 2007. Splendid Ruins for an Excellent Republic. Saudi Aramco World. Foss, Petar W. Lycia. Encyclopedia of the Roman Provinces ERP. Archived from the original on 26 February 2012. Virtual Tours, Myra, Mamutler, Lara, Turkey. EDS Systems. Full-screen panoramas of the rock-cut tombs of the ancient Lycian necropolis at Myra, Virtual Tour, Demre. Myra, Lycia. Alexander Peskov Photography, 2011. Klo, Kate. Lycian Way Guidebook. Retrieved 3 May 2017. Map of the Roman State according to the compilation Notitia Dignitatum.